a happy new year 2023. I hope everybody of you had a great New Year's Eve and that you feel well again. In this video today, I want to show you why you might need a field flattener for the Sun of Star 71 and if you really need it. From the comments below, I noticed that some of you consider buying a Zenith Star 71. And there were some discussions about taking a Zenith Star 71 and maybe some other scopes. A lot of you are uh, put off by the um, idea that you need to buy a field flattener on top of the scope. I can totally understand that and uh, for me in the beginning it was something I have to get used to. As you can see from my first impression of the scope, I really like the scope and after some lights I gathered with the scope, I'm really impressed by the image quality. In this video I also mentioned the field flattener for the Zenith Star 73. And I also said that I think that it's really needed for that kind of scope if you want to get into astrophotography. But why is that? A telescope like the Zenith Star with the short focal length can have a optic aberration, which is called a Petzval curvature. This fancy term means that it's not that easy to put a flat object onto a flat image plane on the optic axis. You can see why that is. When you have a flat object normal to the optical axis, when the light goes through the lens, they will have each uh, different focal planes, uh, focal points. And this results in a curved image, so that on the edges of your image, the object will look distorted. Uh, you can either have a field flattener or you have a curved sensor like your naked eye. Here you can see the problem. But even if you don't like the physical background, you are still affected by it. You heard that right, flat earthers. The image you have taken without a field flattener might have some problems with out of focus stars on the edge that have some distortion with them. How that will look like, I will show you later. One of the easiest things to get around this problem would be to buy a telescope without a lens, just like a reflector. Or you buy a reflector that has a longer focal length and a, a, at best a focal ratio that is above 7. But if you want to have this extra speed, you just like the Zenith Star, let's say for 5.9, you need some field flattener or you are buying another scope like these Red Cats. A disclaimer here, I am not supported by William Optics whatsoever, but I have really digged into their products and I was really impressed by them. A lot of other YouTubers used uh, the Zenith Star or the Red Cat and I heard a lot of reviews about them. And in my opinion what gets used often is maybe something that is already good enough for me. So this is why I am taking now the Red Cat for comparison. So this Red Cat series is made without a field flattener or best as I said you don't need one. You have already a flat field and this is really impressive and good to hear. So you can compare these two telescopes uh, with another. The Zenith Star with a field flattener costs you a bit more than the Red Cat 51. The problem is that you trade off a lot of magnification because the focal length is uh, much shorter. Here you can see the field of view with a Zenith Star 73 with the Andromeda Galaxy. And here, the field of view with the Red Cap 51, um, both of them with a full frame sensor of the Canon ES60. This is no real downside, just something to consider. There's a lot of composition up there in the sky that uh, every field of view has its own right to exist. A more sincere comparison between a Red Cat and a Zenith Star would be the Red Cat, Red Cat 73. It has a focal length of 350mm, still smaller than a Zenith Star. So the field of view is still a bit wider than what you would get from a Zenith star. But again, it's just a, just a thing of taste and what you want to take a photo of. Um, but as you can see now, you are paying a lot more than a Zenith star together with a field flattener. I would love to get my hands on these red cats. Here I have an image for you without a field flattener. So this image um, was taken 
we're under um, bad circumstances. We have a lot of clouds down there and um, I have taken a 10 seconds exposure. And as you can see, especially on the corner of the image, the stars look elongated and out of uh, focus. Um, this is the effect of the Petzval field curvature we have uh, discussed earlier. Still impressive. And you can just cut out the stars that you don't need, so you can crop your image. That image was taken with a full frame sensor. What about a smaller one? First of all, the image quality is really bad. Um, the seeing on that day was really bad. There were a lot of clouds and I wanted to take the picture anyway, so I'm not really in focus, I think. But um, to prove the point, you can see the elongation on the stars, especially on the edges, but it's not as bad as on a full frame sensor like on the Canon ES60. As you can see, the stars on the edges does not look that bad as in the previous images. But that's just because the smaller sensor just can't take the whole field of view that is produced by the telescope. So as I have already said in my previous video, I think that this field flattener is mandatory. If you really want to get into this hobby, you will really easily get disappointed by the elongated stars that are within on the edges of the picture. So let's have a look with uh, the pictures with a field flattener. This image was taken part of my first light with the Zenistar and as you can see here with the field flattener that the um, image all over the place looks much better. When we go to the corner, especially here you can see the stars nearly or pinpoint stars. This is what we want so a field flattener helped a lot here. Let's assemble the field flattener onto the Zenith star. The first thing you need to do is to unscrew these and then you take out the end of the scope and after that you need this allen key to um, get out these allen screws. There are three of them and they're in kind of oblique in there. After unscrewing these you are now able to turn that one around quite a bit until it is also loose and you can take it out of the scope. Now you take the field flattener and um, on the larger part you unscrew um, this cap here and then you will put it onto the back of the scope. After it sits really firmly, you are going to tighten up that screw here and after that your field flattener is assembled. Then you can uncover that cap here and this is where your adapter for the Canon camera gets onto. Because I have a light pollution filter, I want to install it into the field flattener too. Um, to do that, you unscrew the back part of the field flattener here. Then you take the light pollution filter and you put it onto the back of the field flattener. And after that, you take the end of the field flattener again and you cover your light pollution filter with that or any other filter, of course. After that, you are screwing that ring inside. Um, because we need that later, um, you screw until it is firmly attached. In order to get the correct focus, we need to adjust our field flattener. In case of the Zenistar 73, with this field flattener, we need to um, unscrew the back uh, end of the or this back ring here until we land on the 11.4 millimeter mark. After that we take the um, more uh, inside ring, the, the smaller ring um, or the narrower one I would say and then we are going to lock that um, with the big ring just like that and then it is connected. 
Now we're going to attach the camera. Uh, for that we need the M3048 adapter and uh, we are going to put it, um, we have already put it on the back and after that we can attach our Canon camera. We need to turn it around a little bit and if you feel like it uh, should be in place. Now you can see that the camera is a little bit off uh, of the axis and you can turn the, the field flattener here so the camera is in in line. There you go. So there you go. A lot of options to counter the Petzwell curvature. You can buy another scope, you can live with the arrow on the edges of the stars. No, you won't. And you can also just buy a field flattener. It just depends on how much you want to spend on this hobby and what you expect from your pictures. So if you like this video, please press the thumbs up button. And if you want to see more of my videos, feel free to press the subscribe button too. If you want to support my channel, I would really appreciate if you use my affiliate links down below in the description of all the gear that I use. And if you want to see me uh, taking some picture of the Andromeda Galaxy with the scope in the mount, press this video up here. I wish you a great and successful year 2023 and a lot of clear skies. So stay healthy and take good care and we we'll see us next time.